Do you believe the IMF, your former organization, is getting it wrong in cutting estimates, or do you think the stock market is its own beast and maybe telling us a different story? We're seeing some slower growth in 2019 because what happened was last year had a big boost from the tax cuts in 2018. So a bit slower growth this year is not alarming. We're still seeing good job growth, good consumer spending. Uh, the jobs are adding to the household wealth. This is not a recession scenario, and that's going to be favorable for the year. So you think the market rebound from that December collapse is justified? I think it is. Certainly is. The, the, corporate earnings, the, uh, the corporate earnings are on track. We've seen some weakness in some spots. But most importantly, economic fundamentals in terms of employment, consumer, are really in place. You know, Jeffrey, it's not just our markets. The Asian markets have been hot. The European markets have done fairly well as well. In fact, the majority of global assets, whether it's oil, whether it's bonds, whether it's equities, they're all up. Do you believe that move is justified? Um, we also think that is justified, especially, you know, relative to where we've come from uh, after last year. Having said that, the important thing is where do we go from here? Would we, we be adding to equity exposure? Do we see even better times ahead? I think the jury's still out uh, on that. Earnings so far in the U.S., and if you look at the China data, I think the outlook is somewhat mixed. You know, you, you recently cut your S&P 500 EPS total estimate down about 3 percent, but your estimate for 2020 mm. is up from even your, your higher bid at the first time. So do you believe we will still see earnings growth in the S&P 500, just maybe not to the pace that we had seen prior? Absolutely. And we need to realize that we've come off an exceptional year, right? So high teens, you know, plus 20, you know, those numbers, those are exceptional numbers. So some normality, some mean reversions always to be expected. But this year, 3% next year uh, to 2020, as you said, we're up at 7%. That highlights global GDP, nominal growth at 6%. I think if you are central banks, are you fine with that? They would say, yeah, absolutely. The one thing I like about having you on, Calvin, is that because you are an economist at the Real Estate Investment Trust Association, NAREIT, you kind of get a view of the macro economy, but also dig down into real estate, commercial real estate considered to some a leading indicator. From your perch there, how are you seeing the economy? The real estate economy has actually got a, a good year ahead of it. Uh, we have these strong economic fundamentals, just commented on those. But the most important thing is the demand for leased space, leased commercial real estate space, just keeps on growing. We've seen a lot of construction, a lot of sectors, but there's demand that is matching that construction. So and I assume people don't take leases out unless they believe they're going to have employees to fill those spaces that, or to have boxes to fill those spaces. That's right. These are people who have a good business need for that space. That's reflecting stronger activity in the rest of the economy. It's a good barometer overall for the health of the economy, and it's got a good year ahead of it still. Jeffrey, what's the biggest risk that you see right now globally? Um, I am still quite worried about the state of margins right now. It's basically what central banks are saying. They are looking at rising wage costs, uh, so a tight labor market, that's great, but it seems like people are not spending enough, whereas firms, they don't have enough pricing power, right? So how do they pass on the costs uh, if there's no significant inflation? And that's why the central banks, especially the Fed, there's discussions about letting the economy run hot for now. So we really need to see this PPI, CPI divergence and where that leads um, corporate earnings up ahead. Calvin, same question to you. I know you're optimistic, but what do you see as the potential biggest risk right now? Well, in the real estate space, you'd be looking for overconstruction and worries about higher interest rates. Any signs of that uh, overconstruction? No, 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 not, not at all. Uh, there's some sectors where there is a lot of activity, but the demand is calling for it. We see low vacancy rates, and that's good for rents. That's good for property prices. The other risk would be if interest rates would be moving sharply higher. We're seeing the Fed saying they don't need to raise rates. Uh, if you were to look back over the past you know, 30 years or so, rates have gone from very, very low to very low, and now they're stuck at low. This is a good, good financing environment. 